Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Miguel and Michelle and today we're gonna talk about one particular iconic character from the gothic subculture. We usually talk about monsters, myths, and legends, but we're gonna talk about a vampire hunter. Ooh. A person by the name of Van Helsing. Oh, I thought we were gonna do Dracula. Nope, not this time. Van Helsing. I mean, I think it's cool and people don't really know that the history and legacy of vampire hunters is just as significant as the vampires themselves. So uh, let's get down to it and have a breakdown on what inspired my version of Van Helsing. Just kind of talk a little bit about the little known history of vampire hunters. As you know, in the classic Dracula, the one hero who finally defeated and destroyed Dracula was Van Helsing. In the 90s, you probably have remembered Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Angel, the one vampire that turned good and went against other vampires. And also Blade, the first vampire hero of color. Uh, technically a dampier, he's half vampire. A, so, a dam a dampier? Or dampier? Uh, it's how quite debatable how, how to pronounce it? that name. Is it German? I believe it's Romani, a mix of Romani and German. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, in here in America, Blade is a known Dampier or Dunpier. In Japan, there's a little light novel series called Vampire Hunter D, and D is a Dampier himself, thus the letter D for Dampier. So yeah, so that's like a most prominent example of iconic vampire hunters. And in contemporary times, we have uh, a lot of subversions of the vampire itself. In film, we have like the first black vampire in like these black exploitation films. One such movie is called Blackula, which is a, a play on the word black and then Dracula. And also most recently, there's a lot of takes and commentary on gentrification using vampires as a metaphor of gentrification. There's actually this one most current movie that completely subverts not only vampires but vampire hunters in the representation. So I believe it was called Black as Night, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I actually watched it like last year. Uh, I think it came out 2021. So it's actually about this young girl. She's actually a young black girl spending her summer in New Orleans and she comes to find out there are vampires that are preying on the homeless and so she basically like gathers the most unlikely group of people with her to go against these vampires and it, it's a very interesting take on this idea of vampires themed into like modern day problems so and I think this is not the only film that came out with that kind of idea there was another one so there was this other movie as well known as vampires versus the Bronx which is my personal favorite and it's very comedic too and it's pretty much the same theme vampire being used as a metaphor for gentrification, preying on the marginalized and disenfranchised, you know, lower class neighborhoods. So I just, and again, the, the team of vampire hunters are young people. In fact, people may think, oh, you know, they're, they're trying to purposely wipe away the legacy of vampires today, where the 80s in America is a very a highlighted point in American history as well as film. Vampires took on another change, and people will forget that movies such as Fright Night is actually an, uh, once again trying to take a, a contemporary version of vampires where it's it's very 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 80s a very 80s film and there's also Lost Boys again the team of vampire hunters are young people so it's really no different but this time they're pushing the boundaries even further trying to also keep it current in tackling current issues. Of course, if you feel like these uh, social commentary is too much for you, you can consider examples in Japan where their version of vampires and vampire hunters is also quite uh, interesting. Uh, some of you gamers out there may remember Castlevania. And once again, what I really love about that version of vampire hunters you have Dracula's son, and his name is Alucard, and his name is basically Dracula spelled backwards. Also a metaphor for him going against his father's goals of taking over the world, so he's become like an anti-Dracula, thus his name being 
Dracula backwards. My version, by the way, is this is one of my earlier digital works. So again, I just it's very derivative of like the more anime RPG version of Van Helsing. I didn't bother like changing the gender or anything, which now looking back, I wish I could have done more and make it more unique. But I kind of, you know, make it more Western, more young anime looking and with like contemporary weapons and clothing more more like western what i find interesting about like, us taking on this character that van helsing does actually have a story he has a character in the book or the novel bram stoker's dracula so definitely defined as like an older man and i guess it's interesting that if you do look at other versions of van helsing oh yeah yeah oh, there are gender-bended versions of Van Helsing. There's even one on Netflix, I believe. It's it's like a live-action version of Van Helsing where it takes place in the future, and it's a woman, and she herself has like been uh, infected by some kind of vampire disease. So it's, it's very wild and like just an experimental take, which, you know, I give them credit for trying. I just really, I was trying to like rack my brain around like, okay, what is actually a recent interpretation of like the character Van Van Helsing and I just literally watched the animation yesterday in Hotel Transylvania 3. They actually do bring the character Van Helsing into oh, the story that's right. but it's mostly yeah. like his like great great granddaughter and the great great granddaughter Erica Van Helsing she like initially wanted to kill Dracula because Dracula and Van Helsing it because you know Hotel Transylvania is based on all the Halloween Halloween typical tropes yeah. yeah and then I'm so amused by the design of the OG Van Helsing and he's like he's completely has no body because like all the all the adventures and basically trying to capture monsters and stuff he like lost his entire body except his head and he's supposed to be like a genius so he has all these like random contraptions yeah have you seen it like yeah so, parts of it yeah it's it's so funny I don't know that's really bad yeah and like they they portrayed him as a typical old man and he has like the German accent so it's very close to the story of the original story of Dracula. So going back to Miguel's interpretation, do you want to explain a little bit about your process? Oh, yeah. I got, I got too excited. Oh no, that's fine. Um, like I said, I didn't really put much thought into how I can make it that unique, unless you consider this unique. But again, it's, you know, a male character. He's cool, the good guy, you gotta root for him, and so... Oh, I forgot to mention, of course, the, the one and only Hugh Jackman. He famously portrayed Van Helsing in his own movie with Hugh Jackman as Van Helsing. So that's one of my major inspiration for my version, because he has that, like, that hat and trying to look cool and fighting evil and of course you have the the crucifix that's also shaped like a pike mm -hmm. a, a stake that's what it is a stake a stake shaped like a crucifix so mm -hmm. i thought oh okay of course it's an obvious symbol and then i gave him some some sort of sword and yeah that's pretty much it and all the other archetypal symbols like him wearing the crucifix around his neck as well. Again, it's just one of my earlier digital pieces, so yeah, it's okay. I, I actually really like your design of Van Helsing. He's obviously 10 years younger or maybe 40 years younger. 40 years younger. <laughs> I know that was a big jump. And probably this is like early in his like, I'm ready to go find vampires. I think he's kind of attractive, I have to admit, so... Oh, thank you. Yeah. It really gives off that Final Fantasy aesthetic as well. Like, it, it really does remind me like the fantasy look. As usual, let me know <laughs> in the comments if you feel you can fight this character. <laughs> And if you feel like you can win. <laughs> I bet he can win with just a stare. Yeah. But in any case, I hope you enjoy this talk and we'll see you next time looking at Michelle's version. I'll see you around. Bye!